maybe you wouldn't say it out of your mouth, but whenever you think circumstances of this life are too hard for God to handle, you're actually saying that God is small and God is weak. So yesterday on day eight of this Devo, we talked about there being confidence in the fact that you are weak and God is sufficient. This is kind of a continuation on that, just about how in your weakness, we still have to act and we still have to move. And weakness, although we should admit it, is not an excuse to like shrink back and be afraid and run away from the calling that God has on your life or whatever he's asked you to do in his word. Then the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against these people. They are stronger than we are. So they brought to the people of Israel a bad report of the land that they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone to spy it out is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people that we saw in it are of great height. And we seemed ourselves like grasshoppers, and so we seemed it to them as well. So God is telling the Israelites, I'm taking you to the promised land. So they're out of captivity, walk into the promised land, and God's like, all right, get your spies, go scout it out, see what's going on. So they go in there and they see the Canaanites are dwelling in the land and they are giants. So much so that in the scripture, they say that they feel like grasshoppers compared to them. They are the definition of shaking in their boots. They're genuinely so afraid that they are not going to be able to conquer them or go into that land, even though that's what God promised them they would do. So much so that they're like, maybe we should just go back to captivity. Maybe we should just go back to Egypt because these dudes are big and we are small. The thing is God had proven himself so much to the Israelites. He took them, he gave 10 plagues to Egypt, take them out of captivity, um, fed them and gave them water out of nowhere miraculously in the desert and kept them clothed all these 40 years in the desert. He parted the Red Sea so they could walk through the sea on the sea floor. Like, how could you not believe that God could come in and defeat these giants? They're so afraid that they let the fear overtake in what they knew about God and and it almost erased their memory of God's faithfulness and God's ability and God's sufficiency. So God knew that Israelite was outmatched. Do you think God needed new information? Was he like, hey, go spy so I can know what's going on? No, he wanted them to go spy and and to realize that this is gonna be a hard task. This is not just an easy, let's waltz up into the promised land. He wanted them to see, and he wanted them to almost be afraid in a way, not sinfully, but see that they're inadequate so that they can trust God. God wants us to trust him. Trusting him is the basis and the foundation for being able to accomplish in what he's asked us to do and be obedient even whenever we are so afraid we're ready to walk back to captivity instead of doing what he says to do love this quote oswald chambers once said god can achieve his purpose either through the absence of human power and resources or the abandonment of reliance on them all through history god has chosen and used nobodies because their unusual dependence on him made possible the unique display of his power and grace He chose and used some bodies only when they renounced dependence on their own natural abilities and resources. God uses people who are incapable. He uses little grasshoppers that are afraid of the giants and he conquers the giants anyways. All right, so we're talking about trusting God. What circumstances in your life right now are frightening? They're scary to trust God. If you do what he says, it's gonna be hard and it's gonna be scary and you don't even know how it's really gonna work out. What is happening in your life like that right now? Okay, so how is it an opportunity for you to trust God? You're afraid of X, therefore you must trust God to do Y. Sometimes we are really wrong in the way that we think God uses people. He only uses the beautiful people, the super smart people, the super brave people. But we just read that Oswald Chambers reminded us God loves to use just regular schmegular people that aren't immensely smart or immensely great or immensely popular, whatever it may be, because it is a stage and a platform to show his strength and his glory through that person. So the spies were paralyzed by fear because they actually saw their opposition as big and God as small. Maybe they wouldn't have said it out of their mouth. Maybe you wouldn't say it out of your mouth. But whenever you think circumstances of this life 
are too hard for God to handle, you're actually saying that God is small and God is weak. So next time you are afraid, just keep it real. You're afraid. Get out a piece of paper, make a list, two columns, column one, column two. Write down all your genuine concerns. Pray those out to the Lord, but also make a column of every way you can remember that God is faithful, that God is strong, that God is bigger than what you're afraid of and how God will come through for you because he's never going to ask you to do something that he's not going to supply you the grace and the strength to accomplish. Grab a friend, write your list with an open Bible, lots of scripture, and just encourage your heart that God is bigger than whatever it is you're afraid of.